Okay, hi. Hi. Thank you so much for coming, and I really look forward to hearing about your previous experiences with the violin. Yeah. Um, well, previous experiences. I have played cello in college okay. for a semester. Okay. Um, but that's it. And yeah. I was pretty bad at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm really good at reading music and stuff, but just not doing the left hand and right hand, doing two different things at the same time. Yeah. Because saxophone, like, is one note at a time. Yes. And I prefer that. And yes. And one thing at a time. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I know what certain things are called like the bridge and the body, the scroll, the pegs, right. the strings, G-D-A-E, right? Good, good, good dogs always eat, right? Good dogs always eat. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. maybe rest position. Do you know rest position? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I figured, because you've just been holding your violin. Yeah, I'm just like, like uh... <laughs> <laughs> so okay. position. So, yeah, it's also um, when you are um, standing up and you're going to take a bow, it's important that everybody looks the same. So you can hold your bow um, with your right hand, which is, um, you regularly hold it. Um, yeah, you can actually grab it, and then you can fit your violin, yeah between your what that's right so that's yeah that's how you take a vow wow. yeah I feel professional yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> cool. okay good so uh let's start let's talk about how um let's put our bows um to the side for a second okay i'll put three here good and let's talk about how to hold the violin. Do you know anything about how to hold the violin? Um, I know that it's like here-ish. Right. And you want it to be like 45 degree angle maybe? -ish. Right, exactly. So so you want to fit it under your chin. Now you already fit it uh, pretty well actually. Sweet. What <laughs> when I uh, teach my young students, I like to First, tell them to um, open up their legs a little bit, shoulder width apart, which you're already doing, and then hold the violin by the ribs, and then hold it out with your hand, your left hand, and then turn it and place it under your chin. Yeah, so that's just an easy way. And remember, the violin rests uh, along your uh, collarbone, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel that. So that, that's good. Now, do you feel comfortable without a shoulder rest? Have you tried a shoulder rest before? I've never tried one before. Okay. Is it a game changer? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. It really uh, depends on uh, how tall your neck is and um, if you feel like it's sliding. You know, that there are advantages to the shoulder rest um, because it might keep it from sliding, but at the same time, you don't have this mobility of being able to um, to move the violin around as much because it just kind of locks it at, at a certain angle. You okay, know? yeah. So I've never tried it, but it seems like it'd be helpful. I've I've always seen people just like hold their violin in place with their chin, and I'm like, exactly. How, how do you do that? Right, right. Well, it, there's a very <laughs> fine balance. You know, usually yeah. I don't like to tell my young students. Uh, to not have a shoulder rest because mm -hmm. it's harder to balance it without raising your shoulder mm -hmm. or pressing down with your chin. Those are two very important things that you should not do. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so once you, you have it under your chin, then you um, place your hand up uh, on the fingerboard. Now you want to hold it with these two fingers, the thumb and the index finger. So you want to feel like you have a strong hold okay. of, yeah. Um, so if, if you let it go, you can literally just hold the violin like this. What do you think? Can you? There you go. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Good. All right. So, so then you want to have your fingers uh, slightly above one of the strings. So let's try that. 
Uh, That's okay. good. Yeah, good. And then, um, if it depending on what string you're playing on, there's a different arm level. So if you're gonna play on the G string, your arm is outwards, and then the D string and A and E. So, okay. so yeah, so that's one thing you're so gonna you move your elbow and like not your wrist. Exactly, like and what I tell my, my students too is no pancake hand, right? So you don't want this, and you also uh, don't want the other way around. So you, you want a, a straight line between your arm and your hand. Okay. Good. All right. Do you have any oh. questions? Uh, not, not yet. I don't really even know what to ask yet, <laughs> but yeah, that makes sense. Like placing it and then pretending like you can hold the whole weight of it. Right. Like that, and then moving your elbow and not your wrist and trying to keep a straight line. Right. Yeah. So the hold is very important because a, a lot of students, they want to grab the, the violin and hold it mm -hmm. with other things other than just the thumb and the index yeah. finger. And then that's also why a lot of times they, they do the pancake because they feel like they need this part of the hand to hold the violin up, right? Yeah. So, so again, these two fingers, and also it's important that there's a, a solid hold under your chin so you don't feel like you need to support it with your hand in any way. I feel like I need to support it with my hand <laughs> in every way. <laughs> Well, I mean, you should be able to just... Uh, why are you doing that? <laughs> it's painful. Is it? Oh, maybe it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I would... I wonder if the... Um, what's it called? The shoulder rest. I wonder if the shoulder rest would help that. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, wouldn't, I would not uh, tell my young kids to to try that because they probably would drop the violin if yeah they're just starting out oh yeah yeah i i didn't even trust it right now it's like are you gonna <laughs> have me try that <laughs> <laughs> well okay yeah. so this concludes lesson one of how to hold your violin yay okay thank so you. thank you for that